Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Kentucky Route Zero. So, the last episode, hmm, what really did happen in the last episode? I mean, it's strange. No, actually, the last episode wasn't that strange. Um, we broke down on the side of the road. We had some more conversations. The drugs hit us a little too hard. And um, apparently, I just have a skeletal bone for a leg. So, yeah, sounds like a pretty typical episode of Kentucky Route Zero. Oh, also, um, we got invited to a chindig thingamabob i have no idea so um i guess we're gonna go ahead and check that out now at the lower depths huh. well i think that's about it so let's get to it what's up blue feels like feels a little like home huh it's not all bad memories gentler times in a twisted kind of way hard times served uh, don't know if that's the most inviting tagline for a bar but okay kind of late are you sure they're open I mean considering Waffle House stays open 24-7 I mean come on sure they're open this is one of those places Let's head on in. We are not saints, but we've kept our appointment. How many people can boast as much? <laughs> That's lovely, ma'am. Who said it? A poet. Let's see, it's June bug right there. A whole sandwich is just sitting there. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Damn it. Ma'am, I hate to say it, but the cupboard is bare. Have some vision, Cricket. We've got one, two, four patrons. Harry doesn't count. Well, we've done more with less. What kind of music do you play? It's like Serrano Cole meets Ike Towner but with a woman lead and the keyboards as kind of ambient whisper wave. Okay. I guess that's supposed to be Ike Turner and uh, God, I can't remember that jazz singer's name. Ah, fuck. It'll come to me at some point. A little bit more reverb. There's some Dolly Crown in there too. Like the early stuff before she joined the sheet swingers. Okay. Is that supposed to be Dolly Parton? Better drum programming, though. Whisper Wave. Got it. Well, I mean, I'm a big fan of Retro Wave. I have no idea what the hell Whisper Wave is, but okay. Maybe it's kind of like Chill Step or something. I don't know who those people are. Well, you'll hear it in a minute. Again, you don't want to mention anything about your leg by some chance, bruh. A rough brick between two pieces of stale bread sits in the center of the table, surrounded by a ring of undisturbed dust. Hmm. You know, you can find a lot of hole-in-the-wall places around here that'll turn around and have, well, their food is probably better than that, so. I won't insult them like that. A bulky set of black goggles sit on the edge of the table, next to it an ashtray, a newspaper, and a few empty glasses. Huh. What is it? I guess... I don't know. Can I tell you a horrible secret? I never wear eye protection in the shop. It's dangerous, I know. But I'm always looking back and forth from my... Oh, Lord. Oscilloscope to whatever I'm working on. And the scope has this peculiar kind of hard-boarded glow that I just... Well... I've never found a pair of goggles or glasses that doesn't smear out the glow. At best, the lens softens everything so you can't quite find the edges. Well, I mean, I can't really. I used to do welding, and a lot of times when we had the weld shield on or the welding mask on, I wouldn't have my actual safety glasses on up underneath because it's already hard as hell to see with the damn face shield on. So, eh, not the same thing, but I can kind of understand that.
Also, kids, don't do that. Don't, don't, don't do that. I have been very sleepy a few times, and I've turned around and tried to weld something, forgot to lift my weld shield down. Oh, God. So, yeah. We'll go blind for a second. Blindness is not fun. Ezra flips eagerly through the jukebox's catalog of songs. What do you think? I don't know how to play this game. <laughs> Are you talking about the actual game or what? Because I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Pretty sure I'm dead, but you know, we'll figure it out eventually. All I'm pouring tonight is Hard Times Whiskey. Wow. Uh, got any coffee going? No coffee. Hard Times Whiskey. Jesus. You not even have water or something? Yelling towards the exit. Say, shut the GD door, would you? <laughs> I can't afford to run the AC all night. Sorry, Harry. Oh, it's you two. Where have you been? Never mind. Listen, I can't keep this place open through the small hours of the night just waiting for musicians. Mm, where is everyone? Everybody had to, uh, clear out. Let's get set up, huh? There's nobody here to listen to it. I can't pay for it. We brought some people, Harry. A crowd is forming. Yeah, but also I... Couldn't you use a break, Harry? Been on my feet all day. But I... What is that noise? June bug. Is there anything else? And where is this supposed crowd? Because I don't see a thing, but okay. Performance for three. How's it looking out there? How are y'all feeling tonight? To Harry. Can we get a bit more reverb in the monitors? Harry adjusts the soundboard behind the bar. How's that? Test, test, one, 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 three, fifty. Lamentation, lamentation. Sounds good. <laughs> kind of sounds like what I do before I start recording. How's everybody doing? Anybody had a real bad night? Oh boy, if only you knew. How about you, old man? Yeah, real bad. We'll try not to make it too much worse. This is a song I heard in the tavern many years ago at an open mic night. Me and Johnny were out just riding around. You know, I like to drive around, old man. That's my job. Of course you do. Oh, well, you just didn't even give me a chance. Thanks. So we were out riding around and we passed this gaudy old tavern. I mean, it was a real dive busted up facade weeds in the parking lot taps all dry bats in the burn what and run by this creaky bag of bones looked like the old thing keeping him <laughs> the only thing keeping him awake was the fear of death so glad to be back here at the lower depths hey now so we stopped for an early drink and there was a lady singing right here on stage and the song she sang, well, it stuck with us. And now it's a regular part of our repertoire. So you do cover of songs? Okay. Never got that lady's name, but she seemed like a sweet gal. And she had a voice like Scotch whiskey. And we just hope we do her song justice. So here it is. Too late to love you. Oh, Lord. This is going to be sad, isn't it? Oh, ha, don't question it.
Oh, shit.
Well, shit. I wasn't expecting that. That was actually really good. Huh. That was neat. I like how you could actually make choices to change the lyrics. That was actually really cool. Hmm. The song was interesting, too, because, I mean, at the end, she said something about she she wished that she could take it back, but it's too late. Hmm. I wonder how different that song can be and how many different meanings it could have. Hmm. I might look it up later on. I'm sorry, I didn't want to turn around and interrupt during the song or whatnot, so. But yeah, that was really good. And and the sound she was making, like, it didn't sound like she was singing high, but. Hmm. It just didn't sound like she was singing low either. That was a weird not weird, but it was just a very unique way of singing. Kind of remind me of LaRue to a certain degree. Well, man. All right. Um, Junebug. Well, hope you liked it. Kind of sad, isn't it? Kind of. Listen, we appreciate you folks sticking around for the show. There's nothing more wretched than playing sad songs to an empty room. We've just got to get our fee from Harry, and then we'll get you headed to the, uh, zero. Wait, I don't think we ever mentioned anything about the zero. Well, Harry, I think that went pretty well. I'd say the crowd was into it. Reverential. Wrapped. I guess the usual fee is about right. We'll let you get back to your business well that's just the damn it i was trying to tell you to i can't pay they cleaned me out i've got nothing left but a gd iou from the distillery an iou yeah i traded them some i traded them for some whiskey and i guess i had some surplus credit so i got this note to get some more from them later on must have been a hell of a trade i had to Got to keep this place from uh, place open somehow. God damn it! Watch your language, Harry. Did you pay them with your IOU? Well, I. Very contemporary, very astute. How about it, Harry? Let's push some paper around. Well, it's just I can collect on it here when they bring some whiskey up. But for you to cash in, you'd have to go down to, you know, down to the distillery, down to hard times. And, you know, it's you've got to take the zero. So that's what we'll do. How do we get there? Are you folks sure you want to head down there? I've never been myself, but I hear people hear things, rumors. It's where we've got to go. Well, I'll tell you then. But this is it, right? We're square. Harry, you're all right. If only. You've got a radio in your car. Yep. Well, here's what you've got to do. Take a left out of the parking lot, and then just fiddle around on your dial until you hear something familiar. But, I mean, familiar, but strange. You know the feeling. Like I used to go hunt with my uncle out in the mountains, and now I watch these nature programs. They're filmed in the mountains, and there's the deer, and I know all the plants and every kind of tree, but something just doesn't look right. And it's even stranger for being so close to familiar. Something like that. You'll know it when you hear it. Fix that strange but familiar station on your dial. Drive for a bit. Then turn around with the station cuts out. I mean, right then. Hope you folks find what you're looking for. Eventually. Always a pleasure, Harry. Sardonic. Is it? Okay, full disclosure. I am not going to remember those directions, so I am glad that they have a little thing that I can look at anytime. So that's why we have the radio. 
Okay. So, let me see what, what he said again, because... Okay. The Zero. From the lower depths, tune the radio looking for a station that's familiar but strange. Drive for a while until the station cuts out, then turn around. Okay. So, let me try that. How do I change the radio station? Ah, there we go. This station doesn't quite match that bartender's description. Definitely weird though. Let's keep scanning. He said we'd know it when we heard it. Oh great, so this has turned into, uh, what was the name of that game? Oh god, what was the name of that game? Oh the god, Dick, Dick the game with the radio station. Oxen free. Oh yeah, that. I never played that either. Maybe I'll play it one day. But I know there's a radio in it. Is that it? You're not gonna comment on that? Maybe that's not it. What's this station? I've never heard this before. Sounds like horses. Horses running? A race? Lysette and Ira had some horses years back. Yeah? I've always been a little afraid of them. They're so big and... I don't know. You look in their eyes and they're almost human. You don't like horses either. One of them tried to... Yeah, anyway. I just didn't like the way that horse looked at me that time. So, yeah. Thought he was gonna try and take my manhood or something. Uh, like they're human and animals at the same time. Since they've been domesticated so long, I guess. Well, that fits familiar, but strange for me. Harry said we'd just drive until it cuts out. There are horses in the middle of the road. So then we turn around. What? Oh, the hole. Can't you drive faster? Hall of the Mountain King. You know, I don't know if I'm honestly going in the right way with these choices or whether I'm just stumbling upon these accidentally. I, I, I don't know. Just whatever. What do you suppose happened here? Some kind of storm washed it away? Or just a slow drip from the ceiling, wearing it down? Yeah, I was kind of confused about that. Like, are we underground or what? The bridge ends abruptly, crumbling in despair. Disrepair. Uh, 
Time to cut him loose, ma'am. You bored? Nah, it's a slow night anyway. I'm happy just tagging along. Boardwalk. A loop of decayed rope is coiled on the banister. Some rotted sections have been smothered, smoothed over with a fine dust. Computers. Broken computer monitors are heaped precariously among the rocks. Shannon, you don't have anything to say about that? What in the hell is this? A pet carrier for a cat or small dog has been left by the path. A calcified rag weighted in the corner may once have been a blanket. Okay, it's either a bonfire or a clan rally. Hiking backpack leans against a rock. It's empty except for a dusty bag of cat food and a few punch cards. Fire. A pile of discarded electronics burns steadily in the center of the chamber. Amy, oh, were you always standing there? Oh, it's triangles within triangles down here. Shifting, intersecting. Shifting, intersecting, overlaying. Isn't it romantic? Let's see. You're here to steal back the love of a boy you once knew, when you were too young to recognize the movements of the heart. And you're escorting her, pretending to have her interest at heart, while really... Really... You're in love with the young woman as well, and so you've agreed to help him conspire to win her affections. But it's just a ploy to set him for set him up for embarrassment and diminish him out of the picture. What in the hell? Is this the secret story that I have not followed or something? What are you talking about? No, you're right. It's insipid. De derivative. I used to be really good at this. I had 11 novels published from The Billionaire's by Bidding to Fields of Longing. Real hot. Bodice ripping stuff, you know. I miss those days in my Lexington studio apartment. Just me and my thesaurus. Steaming up the windows. Okay. So you were basically just making smut. Shameless. Uh, why did you stop writing? You know, suddenly it was all computers everywhere where you went. I thought I might be able to do something with that. Inject a little libido into those ugly beige boxes. Ha! <laughs> so I went back to the university and I studied human-computer interaction. And then I picked up Donald's research. Assistantship. Here as a tester. Debugging. In my off hours, I played around with the doomed love story at the core of our little simulation. That seemed to amuse Donald, so I kept at it. I'm afraid I tinkered too much, made it too complex. Now our work is never done. We don't even have to add any new functionality. The bugs just grow on their own. Too complex. What? I miss those days in my Lexington studio apartment. When did an old man get there? A woman in tattered, in a tattered cardigan looks furtively at the other people around the fire. This game never ceases to get strange. It is amazing how it gets strange. 
Donald puffs on a smoldering pipe while half mumbling, half singing, an old country tune. Is it Old Town Road by some chance? Softly. Where did the old green river runs through hills and caves not known to us down to the sunless sea? Oh, who are you? Sorry, did we startle you? I might say you did. I thought you might be one of them. Oh no, you can't be. We've been patching all their spy holes. We keep the lights dim and the motors running softly. And we route the smoke out through... Out through... That is... What were we talking about? <laughs> What's that computer over there? Looks pretty vintage. It looks like a harmless old computer, doesn't it? Like some beat up mainframe exhumed from a university basement and left in this cave to rot. Or to flower. No, it's no ordinary computer. I've modified it extensively and in some pretty experimental ways, believe you me. And that's to say nothing of the software, but... You look like a technically minded sort of person. Tell me, do you know the effects of mold growth on diffuse based transi transistor circuitry? Jesus. Mm, sounds like it was short circuit. Certainly, certainly. But not all of it. Some moldy filaments are more or less conductive than others, and it grows in non-linear chaotic patterns. We can guide it a bit through a simple application of classical hort horticulture, but we can't produce specific results, only tendencies. Thwarted and feeble, we hammer on this derelict keyboard. My name is Reason, King of Kings. But we are mere gardeners in the ruins. Our keystrokes echo yeah, echo off into the tunnels. Boundless and bare, the caves stretch far away. We're too late. Always too late. What? Did you say something? You were just about to tell us about the, about the software. Oh, the software. My life's work. Xanadu. You've heard of it. Uh, they did mention Xanadu earlier, some part of the game. Perhaps you read about it in the journal. It's been... It's been years since I published anything. Xanadu has evolved significantly since I explained it, its data structures in my article, Literary Multitudes, Hypertextual Narrative as Post-Structural Witness. Right, Xanadu was mentioned in that letter, uh, no, it was mentioned in that email at the gas station. Uh, I forgot who sent it, but they said something about finding my, my Xanadu or whatever evolved and then deteriorated. Donald sighs dramatically and takes a puff from his pipe. I'm afraid you're too late. Fellow hypertext enthusiast, as the mold accumulates on the circuitry, Xanadu blossomed for a moment into something holy and enchanted. Then all the charm was broken. Do you have any idea what it's like to spend your life building something and then sit powerlessly as you work as your work declines into ruin? Oh, God, they all have something <laughs> except for Junebug. He's just like, no, nah, not really. My family disappeared. Julian and me don't know what to do. I didn't know you was about to lose the leak on your workshop. I guess I would have found that out if I would have went by the workshop. Uh, well, I started off as Conway, so I'll answer as Conway. I drive deliveries for a small antique shop, and we're closing down. Ah, shuffling around the dusty ghosts of antiquity. Well, I have my own ghosts, and I keep them in there, in Xanadu. It's running on that glorious dusty machine. Take a look if you like. Too late to do anything but smoke and reminisce anyway. Far too late to do anything. Hmm. Where did Andrew come from? The hell? Do you know that when I first... No. I mean, if this cave were larger, could it... Now I'm getting ahead of myself. Um... Ah, I've got it. How would your... How would you characterize this space? The one we're standing in now? Um... Kind of spooky. But I'm not scared. Spooky for a baby. I think we'd all agree that's a fair assessment. 
How could... Wait. Let's unpack that for a moment. What makes it spooky? No. How do you know it's spooky? Or would be spooky for a baby? The shadows? Sure, that's... But they're not just shadows, right? I mean, they could be. They're projections. Or maybe they're... Anatomies? How's that? Can you tell where we are now? Surrounded by creeping anatomies? Close your eyes. Will you close your eyes? <laughs> Only if you close yours. Okay, okay. I can do it from memory. Good. Now. You are standing at the top of a rocky peak. A tongue of flame licks the... The shadowy anatomies of... Where are we? Oh, here again. How disappointing. Sorry to uh, disappoint. No, it's my fault. I shouldn't be so attached to the future. It's always getting in the way of my work. Better to be in the moment, carefully observing and documenting, with no attachment. Let me give you an example. I was a grad student studying statistics when I started working with Donald on this project. He said we needed someone with a more analytical mind to do the descriptive writing. Someone who would appreciate the cave descriptions as real labor instead of taking their authorial voice for granted. Donald warned me it would be long hours of typing painstakingly detailed descriptions into the computer. And I've put in the hours, believe me, I've put in the hours. I've described every facet of this cave in such detail that sometimes I don't know if I'm reading or looking, writing or exploring. Often in the dark lonely moments, I worry that in my sleep I've transcribed rooms from my dreams into the system. How would we know? They could only be entered with precise, faithful detail. That's all I know how to write. And all I dream about it about is caves. I only dream of caves. Okay, you only dream of caves. A man wearing large glasses inspects the ceiling. Wow, okay. Who else is gonna pop up in my view that I didn't see before? A massive gate constructed out of scavenged materials blocks passage down the far side of the spire. Roberta, I did not see you before. The kingdom is in peril. Roberta laughs. Well, what else is new? Where's the kingdom? You're in the throne room. There are three legendary treasures hidden throughout the castle that will restore these ruins to their former glory. What do they look like? She's messing with you, kid. <laughs> Enchanted jewelry, talismans, a magic mirror that prevents the future. A magic shield that protects the bearer from age. A magic chest that always fills with... I never went to the university. I was an independent scholar. It means I took to the public libraries like Beach... Beachcomber. I studied fairy tales. And then I came to work for Donald. I paid the bills. Rubbed leathering elbows with ac academics. Scraped black mold from the cave walls. Finally, now I carry the firewood until... Senescence. The kingdom is in peril. My brain is just so broken right now. Shattered in the pieces. A woman in a long worn shirt stares at the fire, lost in thought. My brain is just lost. Okay, let's take a look at Xanadu. Baffling control panels are sheltered from the elements with a worn tarp. A closet-sized wall of knobs and wires looms behind the machines, humming faintly. An electric typewriter is the only easily recognizable component. Okay. How do you think we get it started? This old thing? Maybe there's a hand crank around. Oh, it has a run key. Oh god, what's gonna happen now? Act 3, scene 5. 
Xanadu. Okay. Hi. Xanadu. Xanadu. A den of Ardo. Things in rough shape. <laughs> Try blowing one. This is a damn cartridge game. Do these switches do anything? Kind of like an unlabeled switch. Small. Small. Okay, that's worse. <laughs> Try typing help. Yeah, it looks like a house. Type house. Type in house. Type in. In blood quick? Same. Oh, I have my portable Degasso with me. All systems like this one can build up a remnant magnetic field that sort of warps it depending along whatever pattern it's settled into. You know? No, I don't. The Degasso clears that up by suddenly shaking the magnetic field around it, around until it, it's uniform again. That's how I like to think of it anyway. Like shaking a snow globe. <laughs> Worth a shot. <laughs> Hall of the Mountain Gate. That seems worse. Well, okay. Six, Hall of the Mountain King. Bizarre. And what was that about Lula? Maybe Donald knows how to clear it up a bit. Okay. 
So, we just played with Xanadu a bit, and I have no idea what in the blue hell any of that was, but uh, I think I'm going to leave it here for right now, and I'll, in the, in the next episode, we'll talk to Donald and see if we can clear this up and maybe get some coherent messages out of that. So, thank you for watching. See you.